Just found something kind of adorable in the bathroom. Let me show you. Is this a squatter or it's like a training squatter? Because it doesn't really, it's too wide of a mouth to be a Western starter, but that, I'm not sure what they're getting the kids ready for, but it's definitely for kids. As we're heading up north to check out some islands, I think that's what we're gonna get to see. We're going through like countryside and stuff like that, and I noticed that we just blipped over the 1,000 mark of kilometers in the car on this trip, and that just seems significant, so stop. Take some video and some pictures. Between Shikoku and Honshu is a series of islands with a series of bridges that connect them all. And it's actually quite a far distance. To ride them on a bike in a day might be a bit of a stretch. But we're gonna take a tandem bike that we are managed to rent. And we're gonna we tandem. We're the nerdiest people on the bridge. <laughs> yeah, we really are. You got that, you got that nerd hat ah. on. <laughs> and we're gonna take the tandem bike and we're gonna ride across the first bridge and maybe a second bridge. I'm not quite sure the geography of it yet. No, it'll, it'll be the one bridge. No, because we can't get off at the first island because the bike is too big to oh. go on the elevator. Oh. I thought that the this first bridge went past that I, island. Like, it's all the sure. same bridge. Uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not completely clear on I that. was under the impression it's a long bridge. So the dude was like the dude was like, look, this bike is too long to do U-turns and this bike can't go down the elevator that goes down to Umajima, which is the middle island. Which unfortunately we're not going to because it's horse island, that's the kanji. I that's really high that's a that's a really high promise. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's best for skipping it because if they're low on ponies I might be disappointed. If, if, if the quantity of pony is one, you'll be happy. If it's zero, then we'll be disappointed. That's yet. what I'm worried about. Oh, yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> we aren't sure if the islands are causing this, but the water below us is kind of undulating. I really wanted to use that word. In a strange way. It, it's, it's not moving in waves. It's, it's kind of just going this way and that way. And a result of this that I've seen pictures of are whirlpools. And this happens not just in the area that we're in here in Shikoku, um, like on this coast of Shikoku, but even on the other coast, there are special places that people will go to take boats out to the whirlpools. And I feel like we're getting a treat for free. <laughs> I thought I'd explain to everybody how a nerd rocket works. Got a nerd rocket here. And uh, I actually had no idea how a tandem bicycle worked, but the way that this one works anyways, is that there are two chains. And this one goes back over here to this set of pedals. And then if you turn the bike around, you'll see that there is another set. So this back half is more like a normal bicycle. And it has, a gear system like a mountain bike or whatever does that I can operate at the front and it also looks like it has a middle gear system but I don't think it works it doesn't do anything when I shift it or anything like that you still thank god have gears because it would be a nightmare going up the hill with Katie sitting in the back not doing any work if uh, I didn't have the ability to shift down she'd give me some stink eye <laughs> But I thought it was neat that it's very simple solution to what could otherwise be really complex. For some reason, I guess in my head, I just assumed there was some sort of like chain system that went all the way down this side and it would, I guess that could be really complicated, but this is just like a really straightforward way of solving the problem. In the process of filming the B-roll for the Nerd Rocket here, I did realize that I actually can shift the gears for the bit that's down here. I didn't realize I was doing it when we were moving, but it wasn't doing anything. So maybe I just was doing it wrong or I didn't notice. I'm not sure what the deal was, but it definitely works. We have pedaled over to our island destination for the day, which is either Oshima or Ojima. I'm not sure how to pronounce it because it could be either one, but we're here and we looked on a map and the first thing that caught my eye was they have a shipbuilding yard. And the impression that I get from the size of the operation that's going on is they are building very, very large ships. And it makes me wonder how much of the shipbuilding yard is just completely driving the industry on this island altogether. Because usually islands, it's like, what else is really going on, you know? Like, maybe there's a little bit of farming, but if they have a thing like this going on, that might keep the economy going pretty good. 
our biking adventure has taken an <laughs> un un unexpected turn. We were just riding along here, just going and minding our business, and all of a sudden this explosive noise happened. It sounded like metal like dragging across the road or something. It was just this dreadful sound. And uh, it was the back tire exploding. So now we have a two-person bicycle that uh, has two wheels but only one that works and neither of us can ride it. So my wheel is fine. I don't really think this is really fair. I didn't do anything wrong. It's the back one that's just got no air in it now and no tube or anything. It seems like it's just all disintegrated. Anyway, I don't know what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna go up here where it's a little safer to be and then figure that out. <laughs> we're going into town. <laughs> Maybe we can find a bike repair place. We wheeled the bike about a kilometer-ish into the town and immediately a dude comes up and he's like, no, what's going on? Because it doesn't make sense, like two white people on this island pushing a bike through town. <laughs> this isn't normal. So um, I explained like the back tire, it's got a puncture. And he was like, okay. So he started calling his friends, like on the island, to see if anybody could fix it. And like, he kept getting no's, like people were busy or people weren't available or whatever. I like, didn't, couldn't do it, whatever, for whatever reasons. And uh, eventually um, I'd given him the paperwork that they gave us when we rented the bike. And he called the phone number on there and explained to them on the phone what was going on, which was a blessing because I don't like using phones in Japanese. It's okay, but it's kind of like stressful when you can't see somebody's reactions and they can't see yours. It's harder to communicate. It's just, I just don't like using them. But the second thing that I was most worried about is I don't know how to explain where we are. <laughs> and I don't know if they, if like I say the name of the flower shop we were in front of, if they're gonna have any idea what the name, what that is or how they're gonna find it. And they're gonna go back and forth and try to like triangulate where we are. It could be really hard. Cause there's no road names. <laughs> so anyways, um, while this is all going on, there's a, not a huge crowd, but I don't know, five or six people are gathering and like people are looking at things and an old man came out in like overalls and he was looking at the thing. He's like, we're not going to put this. Those were not overalls. That, were... that was a denim, well, full like a on denim outfit. Denim outfit. I don't know. He, he looked like he knew how to fix things and he was looking at it and he's like, we can't fix this. Some sort of new fandangled like type of bunk, bike, bike air tube nozzle. thing. Yeah, nozzle. And he was like, we can't, we can't pump it up. I don't have to pump for this. And I was like, all right. And um, so the people from the rental place got on the horn, they got on the horn with them, explained everything to them, then they talked to me and they were like, yo, we can't bring you a tandem bike, but we're gonna bring some different bikes, is that cool? And I was like, whatever is cool, I don't really care, I have no preference. And they said they're gonna bring it to us and they'll wait 30 or 40 minutes. And then the dude that originally we talked to walked with us over to the city hall because this is a easy place to tell them where we are and we're waiting, that's the whole story. We've got new bikes. The guy came, he brought the two bikes as promised. He's taking our old and busted away and we're gonna try out some regular bikes. I don't know if this means like, are we gonna have to pay for two bikes? Do we have to pay for the repairs that they're gonna have to do on that bike? We have no idea, but at the moment we're trying to catch the sunset, so we're off. This is actually kind of cool because it was fun to ride the tandem bike, but it's also kind of fun to ride like a normal, like, you know, bike. And these are of a higher quality. <laughs> It's like the other one was, it was okay, but it was a little age. These things are like brand new or something. We don't weigh anything. It's really easy to pedal. So I think it's like, I think in a way we got lucky, but in a way we kind of came to an island to break a tire <laughs> and then go back because now we're racing the sun. I didn't have anything to say. I fell off the bike. <laughs> That's true, she did fall off the bike. We were stopping like, just to check out the sunset a little bit, which by the way, is magnificent. It's very <laughs> good. Um, I think this the circumstances of the whole day kind of are making the sunset better than they normally would be. I didn't really expect to get on a bike today and go across this bridge and go to these islands and then have all these friendly people help us. And, and then, then have watch, the bike break and they the bring us break. more bikes and then me <laughs> fall off the bike right in front of the sunset and well. so She was stopping and you just like put your foot down and it's kind of sandy a little bit. I and, don't know what and happened. And you asked but you me just, like what happened and I was like, I don't know. 
I just remember getting hurt. <laughs> Can I show your battle wound? I, I don't know if it's really anything. It's just a little bloody. And my arm into the guardrail on my back. But I don't think there's anything on my back. It's a good thing that you didn't fall in the water or something. <laughs> a fly tried to go in there and I was like, no. No, he's going to eat you. He's going to yeah. climb in there and lay yeah. eggs. Better watch out. But uh, it's looking like we're probably going to be riding over that bridge in the dark. But they don't. the return time for the bicycles is 8 p.m., which is well after dark here in Japan. So I guess that's just normal. It's okay to ride over it in the dark. Maybe the lights will be neat looking. I don't know. I think that they do that because they know people want to see the sunset. Mm, perhaps. And you, you would at least, from, from sunsetable areas, you would need possibly an hour to get back over there. We're basically at the closest sunsetable area we can get to. Hmm. So, yeah, I guess. Yeah. And it's like six and a half kilometers back over the bridge. So that took us like 30 minutes on the tandem and we were really stopping. Was. So yeah. I, I, th I think it's going to be rather quick. I honestly think as well that we'll go faster without the tandem bike. Man, man in the truck, watch me fall. Did, did man Don't in the make truck? eye contact. Did that Don't. guy watch you fall for real? Yeah. You didn't do that? He nothing? was down the road. You were really concerned about me and I'm just looking at that guy, looking at us. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? It's going again. It's pretty relaxing. I mean, there's nothing to really think about, just keep pumping. And I thought I'd be sad that I didn't have my jacket, but the amount of warmth I'm creating is combating that wind and making the wind feel pretty good. So we got back and- uh, We did it. We did it, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, we got back and we did it. It was no problem. I survived my <laughs> own bike riding. <laughs> That's impressive. <laughs> And they gave us back our deposit. We had to give like a thousand yen, which was like ten dollars deposit. Hmm. And they gave us everything back. So the tire busted, and then they came and they replaced the bikes with apologized. two other bikes. And then yeah, of course they apologized. And then they gave us our deposit back and everything, which just kind of shows like how awesome things are. We've been in other countries in the past. We were on a motorbike at least one or two times where we've blown tires, and it's been our deal to like we got a motorbike once. I remember, and the tire blew immediately. It was like 10 minutes and then like they were just like, man, you got to pay for it. And like Great. we had to go someplace. We had to sort it too. We had mm. to go and find a bike repair shop and stuff. But it's just like the little things about Japan. Like that's amazing. You yeah. know, because I mean, they could have been like, well, you know, that's you, you, you rode it poorly. You shouldn't have run over glass. I mean, I don't think we did. We just rode down the road. I, but I, they I looked, I didn't see it. Well, no, you know what? I didn't look because the only thing that happened when that tire busted. <laughs> you screamed. No, no, no. Ah! <laughs> maybe, maybe. You, did, you screamed. You're like, ah! And you went, I'm scared. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you started looking back and all I said was, I'm scared. <laughs> I, 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 I gave you no information. I knew what was going on. I knew that the back tire had blown. I was aware of that and I just was like I'll just tell him I'm scared it was really loud and weird yeah <laughs> all right I'm starving double egg don maybe <laughs> <laughs> got a double egg dong for you I got some pepper in my nose and I thought I was gonna sneeze but things are going okay now um, every trip that we go on there is a picture on the cover of the book that I immediately think I'm going to eat that. This is this in this building and I am here. We have not driven very far from where we got off of the bikes. We're in a place called Imabadi. It is the home of the double egg dawn. Thank you. I was looking around like, what the crap am I supposed to do? There, there were instructions. Did you ingest the instructions on how we were supposed to do this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically cut the egg so that some of the juice from the uh, yellow part of the egg goes down and things and then eat it. <laughs> that was it. Break open the egg. Very uh, instinctual. <laughs> I feel that's an intuitive way to use the egg. <laughs> All right. If they just come over here and your face is blowing bubbles in that bowl, they're gonna be like, "You didn't read the instructions." <laughs> All right. There is pork underneath, egg on top, and some. Oh, I want I want rice as well. Oh. I've been daydreaming about this. Sunny side up's not gonna get a new caliber for sunny side up. 
I I know why it's on the cover, man. How's the pork? Pork is good. Um, a little bit dry. Doesn't like fall apart or anything like that. But it, it's not the standout. It's the egg. It's the egg. Do they do something to the egg, or is it just egg? I feel like it's just egg. I had a good um, chicken. Yeah, it's a darn good chicken. Oh, we are in the egg place. We saw some people on the side of the road, and the icon of this place is an egg. The, the, the yurikara is an egg. I don't know if that means like there's some sort of special egg going on here, but I can tell you there's a special egg in my niche because it's a really good. <laughs> I actually had this meal for lunch. Not here, but at the place that Katie had the big box with a lot of different things. It was a whole lot of fishy stuff on the menu and I saw this and I was like, I'm just gonna get it. And I knew I was probably gonna have it again for dinner, but I, I was like, it looks good. So it wouldn't hurt to have it twice. And actually, I'm kind of glad I had did because the one that I had for lunch was meh. It was okay, I mean, the egg was all right and like the pork was okay and like it was all good, but it wasn't exciting. I didn't see a reason to put it on the cover of a magazine. But this one has got this sauce in it that's like, it's kind of like a teriyaki direction, maybe a little sweeter than that even. And the sauce just dances with the egg and the pepper on top and the pork and it is spectacular. It is really good. And it's really cool to see a subpar one like that's just like existing and then get to come and try the one that's like knocking out of the park. It gives me a really strong appreciation for what's going on in the kitchen here. Eric, do you want to know one of my favorite sounds? What's one of your favorite sounds? It's this. I like the crunchy ground. tree it's really interesting <laughs> so well lit <laughs> i don't uh, can, are, are, what we, are we telling ghost stories what are, the fuck's happening here <laughs> are, we so, ooh, are we supposed to are we supposed to be here like we're in a castle and there's seemingly nobody else here but we're kind of allowed to go inside the grounds a little bit we didn't do any fishing. Seems like we're good. Yeah, there was. <laughs> we didn't do any fishing, but it just doesn't seem. It seems like this should be closed off, right? I mean, it's not. There's no signs. Just about fishing. I, I let you be the guide on uh, we whether we're breaking up? the rules. You I don't tell know. Me. I, I'm just worried somebody's gonna start you're throwing, in charge. shooting so arrows. If, if I decide we're gonna do it, you're gonna go. Should we be doing this? Well, I'm, I'm still thinking we should this. be doing this, but I'm not seeing... They would put a sign up. It's Japan. There would be some notifications. They're really, really, what? really strong about the fishing. I think they would also <laughs> be strong about the entering of the castle. What's your Katie sense tell you? I don't have a Katie sense. Katie sense is let's climb the wall even if there's signs. That's fine. <laughs> I could do it. When are they, they going to... Close the doors. <laughs> smells smells woody, but like sweet wood. What's sweet wood? <laughs> Does that make sense to anybody but me? <laughs> like it smells like wood, but like somebody covered it in sugar. So if we make it into this castle, we now rule this area, right? I think we might, yeah. I haven't seen any resistance. I heard some voices. There might be a fight. I'm a little injured, so you're gonna have to fight for me. Double fight. We made it all the way to the top and we're at the entrance to the guard tower, I guess. Is that what they called it in English? It was just a castle tower. Castle tower. Mm. And it's pretty magical. There's a bunch of little shrines up here and it's basically just us. There's a couple of dudes over there just like chatting. It's quiet. We're probably going to fight them for dominance. <laughs> uh, this is my castle. I think that the reason that you're allowed to come up here is because of the shrines and they don't close shrines off to public access even in the middle of the night. So mm -hmm. I think that it's just you can just come up here. And I don't, even, I, don't, I don't even know the name of the town we're in. Imabari. Is it emo body? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, maybe it's just that there isn't a huge 
draw of people coming to the castle. Like maybe mm. if this was in the middle of Kyoto or something, they would be like, well, we got to close it down so that people don't like cause a ruckus in the evening, yeah. but there probably just aren't enough people around here to cause a ruckus. Yeah, that might be totally true. <laughs> it was a neat but castle. We got two this... people could well, start a ruckus. Yeah, we got, yeah, you're thinking about throwing, overthrowing some sort overthrowing, of kings or yeah, something. Yeah, I see some doors over there that I'm going to bust down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're going to do anything. I Come think to my back. palace party. It's going to be next week. Yeah, once I overthrow this bitch. <laughs> Are you drunk? No, but... <laughs> I am confident. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Does anybody else want to put a blue flame in this as badly as I do? You put way too much Zelda, dude. <laughs> that's, that's a good thing. I forgot to mention that uh, after our bike ride, I used that little kid toilet that I mentioned when we went to go bike riding. I used it. I think adult butts are too big. I was kind of like sliding off to one side because my butt bones didn't fit the, the area, didn't fit the seat. And uh, so getting my relax on and then I realized there's no toilet paper on this side of the toilet stall. It's on the other side of that other toilet. So I had to do the shuffle over to the other toilet because <laughs> nobody was going to hand me any toilet paper <laughs> and so thus i used two toilets for one time <laughs> <laughs> Walking through the temple, you see a lot of things that you've kind of seen in other places. Although this place does have some striking things, but the first thing that kind of just made me stop and go, holy crap, was this gigantic rope wall. But I've realized it's actually a sandal and people are putting Ichien into it. And I don't know if I can get it into one of these points. It's kind of hard. Oh, I think I dropped somebody else's. I'm in. And, oh. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> we can practice meditation and pray for big Buddhas. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I always pray for. <laughs> You're not into those microscopic Buddhas? No, I only want them big. So, yesterday when we were driving north, we saw something that seemed a little bit, uh, stood out as something you don't normally see. And it was like a big dragon statue. And it's just imagery that is sort of like Asian-ish feeling, but not necessarily something you would see in Japan very often. Japan, mm -hmm. in Japan very mm -hmm. often. Um, I, I, in my mind, I'm like, okay, that seems a little more Chinese or whatever, but you get a lot of cultural overlap with things and it's not completely ridiculous to see that, but it did stick out. So we made note of it and we're like, okay, we're gonna check that out when we get a chance. And now is that chance. And it turns out that it's another one of the 88, one of the 88 temples that people do. It's number 51. 51. And <laughs> we've come into it and that kind of out of place statue that was at the beginning with the dragon sort of just is the onset of the entire theme of this place. It's yes, a which very, is... I felt like it feels like I'm going to use words. I don't want them to be negative because I really have no opinion. I actually think it's kind of interesting, but it's hodgepodge and then also a little gaudy. Gaudy can sound a little bit negative. That's not what I mean. It's just, it just seems a little like the there's a lot of stuff here. Embellished. Embellished would embellished, maybe be better. Embellished is the positive gaudy. Yeah, so there's just a lot going on and it doesn't seem to have a consistent theme. The consistent theme is just whatever. Like whatever you want to put there, put it there. There's a lot of different structures and stuff in here. And there are a lot of different smells right now. There's a lot of incense coming through and we can smell that. And there's a hill and you can go up this hill and I guess there's more stuff up there. And the entire experience and the atmosphere is very unique just in the fact that it's just been like throw anything against the wall and let it stay. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's kind of fascinating just to see because I think it gives this place its own personality in a way by taking the personality of everything else and mixing it up. Mm -hmm. Sort of like the United States.
Yeah, this is the United <laughs> States. There's a cat. This is the United States of, uh, of, of the Temples 88. Of the 88, yeah, maybe. Oh, Trying to make a name or a rhyme. No, 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 no. I, I was thinking like you could take all of the different temples and assign a different uh, country to them. Like how would, how do they feel? Oh, yeah. Um, but when we went to the temple number 24, mm -hmm. we both were like, this is Japanese as fuck. <laughs> yes. It was just incredibly Japanese. So, yeah, maybe that was the Japan one. And they, they're probably like 80% Japan. 20% other countries, so. We, there, a bunch of people just, keep, people were going back in that corner. We're gonna go back in that corner. Okay. They're not coming back though. Maybe the big Buddha. I, I, I bet you everybody turns into one of these statues and then you live here. <laughs> you just watched Spirited Away. I did. <laughs> you gonna be a pig. <laughs> really? We're going in here? They put speakers in. So there's weird noises happening and there's like a statue in front of me that looks creepy. Yo, I don't know if that's a speaker. It sounds like an angry monkey or something. <laughs> So far behind. It is a speaker. There we go. All right, so it's a speaker, and not an angry monkey like for real right there. But maybe on the other side of that speaker is an angry monkey with a microphone. <laughs> cave. <laughs> That's where they live. <laughs> I want to note that it's very cold in here. Pretty cold. As we're walking up to some of these like open areas, like they have a walkway and then it kind of opens up into a broader cave area, there are actual sensors that should be sensing movement to turn something on, but nothing turns on. And Eric has deemed it's been off for a while. There's your big Buddha. I prayed. I don't know what I expected, but I definitely did not expect for that cave to just end on a road. <laughs> so now, I'm just gonna walk down the road and see what's down here. I'm not sure if we're inside of the temple complex anymore or not. Kind of feels like not, but there's still some like imagery around that looks like maybe we are. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, I guess I just thought we'd get to the end and there'd be something like there, but it was just street. You didn't pray for more shrine. So that's why there was a, that wasn't at the end. You prayed for big Buddhas. <laughs> that's why big Buddhas at the end. It's a parking area for the shrine. I'm betting that one's free. <laughs> <laughs> it's a one spot. It says it's 300 yen, dude. <laughs> ah, score! We got cheap parking. The road just brought us back down into the area that we had started with the hodgepodge of everything. And it really it just hits you again when you walk back into the little world that it really feels like every religious imagery that you've ever seen in Asia just dropped in one area. <laughs> it's every different type of style that they could possibly have put in. And here it is. You can check it all out, all in one shot. It smells like Werther's Originals. <laughs> it smells, you are right. Why does it smell like caramel candy or whatever? Don't what does it say? Butterscotch. Butters yes, butterscotch. Yeah. yeah, maybe not Werther's, but definitely butterscotch. 
That's weird. So I think that this area that we're in is just like the preliminary area for the actual temple, which is up on the hill. I'm assuming where the Buddha is. Mm. And I don't think we're going to go up there right now because we just we're going to basically drive across the island today. Yeah. So we should probably be in the car. But uh, it was cool to stop and just see this kind of insanity. Yeah, that is a good an it's apt like, description. It's a weird mixture of a serenity and a craziness. Yeah. Can you mix those two things? Yes, you can. <laughs> when we don't know what, when we don't know where we're gonna go to eat like lunch and we've kind of just ended up in no man's land, um, we tend to look at Google Maps or at Tabedogu. And uh, Tabedogu is Japan's kind of Yelp for restaurants. Um, and it is widely used by a lot of people and a lot of information gets put on there, like stupid amounts of information. So I can be looking at a menu of a place and understand exactly what I'm gonna eat and how much it'll cost. Um, we have come to a restaurant from Tabedogu. Uh, the picture that I saw was just an egg on a hot dish with a pile of uh, spaghetti on top of it. It looked really, really good, and Eric got excited about it, so he found it on the GPS, and we wandered over to this area. I got a little bit lost, but we ended up finding Ohara, uh, Ohara, Ohara Coffee Cafe, whatever. I want to call these like mama dens, where they, they serve coffee and it has a very old school feeling and people can still smoke in them and they usually have really good morning sets and things like this, but this place also has what looks like a delicious lunch and we saw some people already eating it and it smells like a sweet pasta sauce in here. This is just filling the whole room. Like if I licked the wall, it probably smells like that or it tastes like that. Um, that's how we've landed here. And we came in and we found the menu. Look at this. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> I can make music with this. <laughs> um, a very cool menu that we totally didn't expect. And now we are waiting for my amazing food to show up and we're just gonna relax and enjoy the mama atmosphere. I have never seen something like this. Um, I've seen hot plate stuff. You can go to a lot of like family run restaurants and you'll get the hot plate that'll have like a hamburger on it or a chicken or something like that. And I've seen Napolitan pasta, which is like uh, noodles with a ketchupy sweet kind of pasta sauce. Um, usually it will come with like a wiener on top. This has more of ham and lots of mushrooms and onions. But I've never seen both of those mixed together with an egg in the middle. I've never seen a hot plate egg situation like this. And I'm, I'm hungry, so I'm just gonna eat it. <laughs> it is a sizzling down there. So hot. Look at that egg. It is very hard to do those. I think that looks really dangerous. When I was little, I thought of the magic number of blows for something to get, like, to uh, eating temperature was three. And I was like, no matter how many times you do it, as long, as long as you do it three times, you won't burn your mouth. That's two. I'm not a huge fan of Napolitan pasta so I don't know how to tell whether it's like good or super or fantastic or whatever but it's fun. What just happened was very fun. The noodles that are in this are super thick. The spaghetti to the max. So that's kind of exciting. Um, outside of that it's just tasty and fun. Um, I'm happy with my lunch. I'm glad that we haven't ended up at the sushi joint where we went on the <laughs> computer to try and figure out where to go. This is much more exciting than that. When we, when we left that little restaurant, it is a very local place. Like, this isn't in our guidebook, tourists aren't going there. We just happened to find it because of the internet thing, the, the Tabadogo that Katie uses. So they do, they're not getting, they're not getting foreigners rolling in there. Like, if there have been foreigners in there the last couple of months, that would surprise me. I might even be surprised if ever was on that list. <laughs> like, it's just, it's just a place where the local people around this little town go and they have their coffee and they have a couple of little snacks and foods and things like that. It's, it's the 
vibe, people are relaxing in there. And where we were sitting is kind of like in a back little, like, I don't wanna say, it's like the corner, right? And it has like, I don't know if they were plastic or real trees, but they were like trees. There, were, there like, was some sort of bush behind Yeah, me. there was bushes around us, so you couldn't really see us. And we we'd gotten quite quiet, like, because yeah. I, I was emailing stuff to work and you were doing other things, so we weren't really saying anything. People couldn't hear English happening at yeah. all. Yeah, so we stood up all, all of a sudden, and out of nowhere, the place had filled up with quite a few customers, and everybody in the place basically turned around and looked at us like, what the hell? <laughs> like, not rudely, just like it was one of those times where it's kind of like, like in Back to the Future 3 where Marty McFly is wearing the pink clothes that Doc gives him and he goes into the bar and the whole place just like it's quiet and everybody looks at him. It's kind of what it felt like. And like some dude in the back, I heard him just, I heard him, he's like, that guy's about two meters tall. <laughs> and then you told him yes and he was like, oh, so good. <laughs> oh, I, I, a further note on the uh, Napolitan pasta. Always comes with Tabasco and I added that whole world's different now. It is Ooh. good. And sometimes that they'll give good. you Parmesan cheese, like a, I had a that craft. On, I had that on one bit. Yeah. I'm not I'm not big on the Parmesan cheese. What? To me, that's just empty calories. It is empty calories. Well, it's not calories. empty calories. It's just like, I, I, I would prefer to just have the tomato. I, I'm a fan of the tomato. That's so. true. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty solid. Mm. <laughs> We've just come... Blah, blah, blah. I'm going to start over. Go back. Having trouble with the manual focus button there. Sorry, future me. As always, the only way we can afford to produce these videos is with support from everyone over at Patreon. If you'd like to help make sure we can keep these videos coming and get some extra perks, consider checking out the link below. Stopping like, commenting, and subscribing helps us too. We also have social media, link below.